success. I figured it out. In the last video, I downloaded a Z80 emulator, and I have a cricket in here. Bloody hell. Anyways, I downloaded a Z80 emulator because I wanted to know if my code was bad or if my hardware was bad. And as you saw, the code worked perfectly, so logically the hardware was muffed. The most recent addition was the static RAM. And as I mentioned in my code, I was doing a call and a return, which meant I needed to have RAM working to be able to return to the correct code location. So the logical assumption is, therefore, my static RAM wasn't being enabled, it wasn't being turned on. This is where the memory decoding comes in. With memory decoding, or I.O. decoding, you are selecting which device is active on the I.O. or memory bus at any given point in time. In my case, I have a relatively simple setup. I only have a flash RAM and a static RAM. And both of them can be turned off when it's not trying to do a memory fetch, but when memory fetch is up, only one device can be active. If they're both active, then there will be collisions on the data line, because both devices will see the read request, and both devices will respond with the data, whatever's in that memory cell at any given point in time. Obviously, if it was a write request, that's something different, because a flash RAM is going to ignore a write request, but... In my case, it was the read request that was failing. So, uh, well, I guess both, because my static RAM wasn't being activated. This was my memory decoding logic. I have a 7400 series NAND. So that's four NAND gates. And a NAND, which is this little symbol here, it ends the two inputs and then inverts it or knots it. So, um, what I was doing was combining the memory request and the A15 line, or the most significant bit of the address bus, to try and figure out if I needed the flash RAM active, or if I needed the static RAM active. Flash RAM being the low memory uh, th chunk, uh, the lower 32K of memory, and the static RAM being the upper 32K of memory. And... I was certain this worked. Uh, I had mapped it out in a circuit emulator. I was convinced this was right. I had even breadboarded it. But, obviously it didn't because my code worked, so the hardware had to be bumped. So I went back and I stared at this, and I did what Boolean logic people have been doing since the beginning of computing, and I did a truth table. And the truth table says, given the inputs, which is either going to be a 1 or a 0, an on or an off, what are the outputs going to be? And so I mapped what this looked like in the truth table with the memory request and the A15, and then I was using a pair of output gates and combining those to give me my low and high. So I figured those out, and then I came up with what the outputs were, and the outputs were complete garbage, total nonsense. Now, I have to admit, I'm not particularly good at this. I mean, obviously. Um, I'm a programmer. You know, I work in C, I work in Perl, things like that. Well, technically I'm a telecommunications engineer, but programmer, whatever. But working with lower level stuff like this, for some reason I have a real hard time wrapping my brain around it. So I came up with another truth table, and I figured what I wanted it to go in, and I wanted to come out, and I finally came up with the solution. And the solution is actually even simpler than the one that I'd come up before. I don't even need one of the gates on the, or I'm sorry, one of the NANs on the 7400 series. And I have, oops, wired it up to match my design here. The logic flaw in my previous design, the thing that tripped me was memory request is active low, but the address 15 is either low when I'm using the flash RAM or high when I'm supposed to be using the static RAM, and I got them fuddled. I knew that memory request had to be active low, but what was coming out was just not right. And 
I figured out that what I was doing was deciding that address 15 was active when it was low, and then the outputs were all backwards as well. So I've remapped it, and this is what I've come up with, and this is the circuit's actually turned on right now. So I've got two LEDs here. When this one lights, the high chip select line is low. When this one lights, the low chip select line is low because memory request is active low. So I've got my switch. Okay, it's a wire, but we're going to call it a switch. And this is my memory request, and this is my address 15. Currently, address 15 is low, so this is in the lower 32k of the address request, and my chip select line is high, or my memory request line is high, which means neither of the chips should be on the bus and talking. So if we flip this to low, we get address, or we get the low chip select line comes up, and we flip this to high, which says that address 15 is active, so we are looking for something in the upper 32k of RAM. We get our upper chip select line comes on. Boy, what a pain in the neck. So, let's see it actually work. So here's my laptop, and I've got Minicom already up and running. You can see the cursor here. And I'm going to plug in the Z80, and we should start to get our banner. Now I've got the clock set way the heck slow right now, which is why it is so dementedly slow uh, to help me aid in debugging. But, finally, we get some bloody output. My software reads in a character, outputs the character, and then outputs a space. So it's just doing echo, and it's not actually using memory for the storage of the data buffer, but it is using it for the stack pointer, so it knows how to jump back. And we see that it finally works. So, now what my choice is, am I going to move this to a hardboard or not? And I think the answer is I may not yet. The downside with doing this is it makes prototyping a whole lot more difficult. So if I have goofed something up, like I did with this bloody memory latching, it's a bit more difficult to correct because I have to do desoldering rather than just moving some jumper wires. I think what I'm going to do is do the second UART and see if I can make that work and then try my bootloading code and if I get it to reliably work then maybe I will stick it onto a hardboard. Well, my word, what a pain in the neck. I'm going to try and get a site up, and I know I keep saying this, but I'm going to try and get a site up so I can start sharing both the schematic and some code. Because I keep discussing the code, and the code's going to get a bit more important in the future, and it's kind of goofy to be showing you, uh, you know, my sheets of code like this because it doesn't really look like much, and it's obviously a hell of a lot harder to read when it's on the screen like this, so I think I'll put the code up so that you guys can download it and see what the hell it looks like and follow along with me at your own pace, I guess. Anyways, wow. If you have been, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Take care.